Welcome to the Jamodi Podcast, where we interview coaches and leaders to find out not just what they do, but how they do what they do. Becoming the best version of ourselves is Jamodi, just a matter of doing it. Uh, what's one thing that makes your program different? I think what makes us different here is our approach uh, to how we do things. Um, it's, you know, everybody talks about putting in the time and, and effort for, for planning, but with us, we, we started this program, uh, you know, in 2016, we were here, um, from grant from day one, ground zero, um, every decision we made from, you know, the buying uniforms, basketballs, what, what, what are we going to put on the walls? What are we going to do? Uh, was something that it probably aggravated a lot of people, you know, some of our first group of parents, because we weren't quick with answers because we knew we were setting the stage for the future of the program. Mm. And that was something that we took a lot of pride in, but also took very serious, you know, something as simple as what, what are we going to call, uh, you know, our, our hall of fame or things like that, or what, I mean, everything that you just kind of take for granted because most jobs you show up and it's done and you can make small changes. Um, you know, I, I don't, I try not to use the word culture much anymore. Uh, Cause I think it's such a buzzword. We, yeah. we can dive onto that. We, you know, that's a bird, one of those things we can go after later, but um <laughs> We, were, we knew we were building from, and, and we knew that everything we did from day one, I mean, we're just now in year six. We're still, you know, in, early in the program, early in the, in the history uh, of what's going to come here. And, you know, when I, I didn't really want the job, um, honestly, because the last job that came open here in the, at this school, they didn't win, you know, and I had people tell me, you're killing yourself. You're, t- you're diving off the career. You know, this is it. It's over. You're going to go there. You'll be fired in two years. You, you know, nobody, nobody wins. Um, you know, and here we are in year six. We've made the state tournament five straight years uh, and the largest classification in Arkansas. And but I think a lot of that what made us different, you know, was we is how much time we take in, in this, the, uh, the amount of time, um, the decisions that go in, um, you know, with our staff. Um, I've been very fortunate um, with who I've been able to hire and work with. And so that, you know, that all goes into, you know, what that kind of does make us different. If you looked at our team in an airport, you wouldn't pick us to win a lot of our games. You lose the eye test is what yes, you're saying. Yes, we don't pass the eye <laughs> test a lot of times. Um, but, you know, when you watch our watch our coaches interact with our players in practice, you watch our guys. Um, and I think the telltale for us right now are the guys that are coming back, you know, our college athletes. Um, we They're always trying to come back around and work out. And That's a good and sign. Something. And talk about the difference, you know, how much fun it was and telling the young kids what they miss. And mm-hmm. so it's been, a, I think that's one of the things that I would point out is just, if somebody, if, like going back to the initial question, what makes us different is I think you're going to see a different approach um, that's well thought out. You know, it's a well-planned, nothing we do just kind of just happens. Um, even the things that seem like a coincidence have been thought out. Um, mm-hmm. Decisions are always thought out, but there's always a plan behind the madness, I guess is what I'd say. So help me understand, you mentioned in 2016 was the school brand new, uh, yes. just built. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think some people might look at that and see advantages to being able to start fresh, but then there might also be disadvantages. The fact that you know, that buzzword culture, you know, there literally is no culture. It, it is starting from scratch. What were some of the big advantages and then maybe some disadvantages too to starting over from scratch like that? The advantage was no one's done it wrong. You know, mm-hmm. like no, you you wouldn't have to clean anything up. Mm-hmm. If it was all a blank sheet of paper. The disadvantage is things that people don't think about. Uh, we have no alumni, which means we didn't really have any community support. Um the school wasn't, it wasn't met with a lot of joy um, to be op- to be opening because we, they went from being the number one high school in size in the state. So now you're going to cut uh, that. Yeah. And with that comes, you know, it changes things. I mean, we're, yeah. we're in the South. Football's a religion. You know, when one year, uh, one year they had a, uh, a young man that was starting quarterback decided the week before the first game, he didn't want to play anymore. Well, in most places that would devastate a program. The backup steps in, they go into feed win a state championship and he gets a division one offer. And so when you cut your when you cut the resources and divide them in two, well things you know change. Uh we went, you know, we're the new kid, the the old school across town. 
felt like we got everything because we were brand new. Um, we feel like they still get things because <laughs> they're the tradition, you know, I mean, and, and so that that's a step that people don't think about when you see a brand new school and you think, oh, great new facilities. Um, you know, you know, we've got a great arena. It's, uh, it's beautiful seats, you know, tons of people. It's bigger than theirs. I mean, things like that. But the stuff that you don't realize is it's hard to go in and a guy that's been in Bentonville for 40 years, whose kids were Tigers, and all of a sudden you're the new guy coming in. And, you know, it's you had to prove yourself. You had to, mm. And a lot of that was we had to win. You know, we had to prove that we're worth your sponsorship dollar, you know. And so that those were the things I think that I didn't really expect to be as as tough. Um, I had worked in a two – our state has a lot of two high school towns, you know, like some bigger metros will have five or six. Um, this was new for us. And I had done it previously in Springdale and kind of knew some of the issues. Um, and then I had left and went to a smaller school. And when this opened, like I said, I really wasn't interested and kind of, kind of dared me into it kind of. And so uh, when I took it, I knew what I was getting into, um, but it was just a little different clientele, different things like that. So mm. That, that's a, uh, there's actually, I've had coaches call, hey, I'm opening up a new school, can you help me? Yeah, don't do this, do this. Um, I've actually started like a book on it, honestly. Like, you know, hey, so, because it's one of those things you don't do a lot and you don't hear a lot of. Yeah, and you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah so a book like that, that can maybe help coaches sidestep some landmines. Because I think the majority of, the majority of coaches, when they take over a new job, it's rarely because something positive happened, like a great may a great coach may be retired but left it in a great spot. Mm -hmm. That's rare. And then it's rarely a brand new school. Most of the time, something bad happened, culture and the feeling of the program is low. So I feel like the more coaches understand that feeling. But then, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's that's a that's a, a specific niche that you you navigated and had success in. I think that's huge. Yeah. And there's a, uh, Mike neighbors is one of my best friends. He says there's three types of coaches. There's builders, there's fixers, and there's sustainers like you were talking about. Well, I've always been a builder or a fixer. What I, what I'm concerned about now is I don't know if I can be a sustainer. I've, I've mm -hmm. always taken over a job that was you know, a situation where the coach left and you have to come in and try to change things and try to do things a little different. Um, now that I'm the only guy here, I'm not looking over my shoulder. You know, there's no one else to blame. I can't, I can't talk about, man, this is, we're in a bad spot because of this, because I'm the guy that drove us there. And so what I'm, I'm now entering into kind of unfamiliar territory for me is, you know, success is that monster you feed it and, mm. you know, but it doesn't care about you, you know, and like, now all of a sudden, now we've, we've reached a point where are we going to plateau or can we go to the next level? And so that changes a lot of how my mentality is on things. So, What are some things that you're doing to maybe, you know, uh, uh, continuing education almost or training? What are some th people you're talking to or listening to, uh, maybe reading to help you with that part? Because you're right, that is a different part of the journey. I think so much of our job that goes discredited is all the decisions you make um, away from basketball. Um, Andy Duke's a big influence on, on, on me, like with their decision-making and thinking, have her book thinking and bets um, kind of getting away from, I was, I don't want to call it traditional thinking because I'm, I would be, if you talk to me and ask about things, I would, I'm probably very traditional on, on a lot of stuff, very conservative on ideas. Um, but, I've, I've learned through, you know, the pandemic to reach out and talk to people and just listen and try to learn every outside, try to have as much information as you can. Um, and that, that has kind of, I think, helped us and changed us to where we feel like we're operating at speed ahead of people. Mm. Um, you know, we, we joke about what we're reading. Uh, I, I keep Annie's book on my desk. I was trying to, the la I think the most important book I've read, um, I guess in the last, you know, year was, was the pandemic population by Tim Elmore. Learning how to talk to kids uh, has been the biggest thing because they're all different now. The yeah. generation gap is so much different. Um, you know, when I when we played, it, you know, you may listen to the same music. It was probably like, we'd have a certain haircut. I had to, you know, I had to do certain things in practice. Um, you know, if you showed up and hadn't shaved, you were in trouble. Now, 
those are fights I'm not going to have, uh, yeah. you know, and, and those are things like the, where the gap is just, is so much bigger now, you know, and I've got my two sons just finished playing for me. Mm. Um, so I, you know, even being a dad around a player and how much different they are where I would go, I remember going home as a player, eating dinner with my mom and finding a game on TV and my sons come home, eat dinner, go to the room and get on Xbox and talk to their friends, That's right. so they, you know, and it's just, but you know, it, it's, that would be the biggest thing is just learning how to keep, keep these kids. If you're going to coach, like you've got to, you've got to understand them more than anything, more than, more than any X's and O, more than anything. It's understanding my players and how to, how I have to coach them. I think it, what it forces us to do is, is figure out what is truly important to us because it can't be, it, it can't be everything. Right. Like you mentioned about, uh, you know, I, I like for our guys to, show up a certain way to our athletic period. So wearing our school colors, preferably some type of faith basketball gear, you know, but, but I've chosen that that's important to me, but that, you know, you could, are we talking socks? Are we talking facial hair, haircuts, what uh, short sleeve, long sleeve outside the jersey? Like you start to micromanage like that. It seems to be more and more difficult. What are some things that you've just kind of chosen this is important. And it, it kind of is getting into maybe a little bit of the non-negotiables or the standards that you have. What have you chosen? Um, I don't do pregame. Um, we have no pregame walkthrough for the simple fact that I would leave so mad because they weren't as focused as I was. So the night before our last practice, we'll stay till 8 p.m. if we need to. We're going to be right when we walk out of the gym. The day of the game is – individually you better be ready so your team is ready mm. i don't we don't do any walk if we do a walk through we should have court shots see who's gonna get dessert on the on the road i like that um because i just i would leave in such a bad mood you know and then um you know i had a coach tell me like you know down here the saying in the south you know the haze in the barn like yep. what else are you gonna do like if you're still going through your if you're walking through your sets and still doing stuff an hour before the game you're in a lot worse spot you need to so, go back and evaluate the last week or two of your of your life and practices and see what you've been doing. Yeah, well, and see that's, that. yeah, and that's a great thing. That's a great point, too. Like, we talked about this. The last thing that I write on the whiteboard, I better have already talked about all week in practice. Yeah. I can't all of a sudden say, oh, yeah, Matt, by the way, when we walk out there in front and play these guys with your parents and your girlfriend and, and social media and your, your buddy just waiting to make you famous on TikTok for messing up, I need you to do this. I haven't talked to you about it all week. Yeah. And I need you to do it because it's important. Like, so we want the game to just be relaxed and fun. And we we'll we do shooting games. Coaches will get involved with them. We pick high, you know, we we'll pick half court teams for the year and keep a running total. Um, you know, and just if anything that we do, that was one of those that I was not gonna fight. And I had yeah. I've had two um, you know, we've had four assistants here. One has gone to be one had left coaching went into a private business, one wanted to become a head coach. Uh, and those were guys that were like, what are we doing on a walkthrough today? I'm not going out there. Y'all go out there. I will not be a part of it. And finally, one of them, he came in one day and threw his clipboard down. He goes, I know why you don't go out there anymore. And I'm like, they're just ready to hoop, man. They just want to play. Like, right. they've been through all the training. Let's go play. And you got to yeah. look at, too, what what do the best do? Well, the best, the NBA players, they are before games two or three hours before, they're doing skill work. Yeah. They're They're actually improving their craft. Uh, so that when that time comes, they feel the very, very best about themselves and their game. Why not? So, so many things from that NBA level, they trickle down to college, it trickles down to us. I think that's something that we can, that we can definitely take from, from them. Well, and that's the thing too, is when I ask coaches why you do it, because everybody else does it, or because that's what they did. And I was like, I, I want my guy. And so we tell them team is good you better be good by the, by tomorrow if you need to stay and shoot stay tonight and shoot if you need to come in tomorrow and shoot come in and shoot the team is where it needs to be for, for the game I feel good about our team going to the game how do you feel about yourself as a player and your role on our team that's what that focus becomes and that's uh you know that's one of the things we choose not to, to fight um another one travel gear we we stopped doing it because the more times a kid would forget it or his mom would toss the hoodie in the, in the, uh, in the laundry before the day of the game, you know, things like that. And then I would, you know, and so we, uh, 
we stop, we stop with that. You know, we ask, hey, we offer it. If you will wear it, where if you don't, great. Um, you know, we we talk about that. Like, what are things that I can eliminate fights and meetings? No doubt. I think you're. I think you're right on the money. You're. Uh, you and I are aligned in a lot of ways here. As soon as you said that, I. I it was uh, a few years ago at Faith. I. I made. You know. I. I made the purchasing of travel gear optional really just to help we're a private school they pay to go here just to help with i don't want to give them another thing that they have to and then i thought okay what's the reason behind wanting them to wear the travel gear they have clothing already they're not going to show up half naked you know like Mm -hmm. they're going to be covered but then too it really is more just a pride thing i want to see our guys walk in looking like a unit yeah. Does that actually translate to them performing better in the game? Or like you said about the walkthrough, about that, or is it something where I'm just sitting there staring at them and it's wearing me out the fact that they're not wearing the pants they're supposed to be wearing? Yeah. It's it's smart. Yeah. We had a one of my one of my best friends I coached with. Uh, it's the only guy I've ever been assistant for. Uh, Brad Stamps. He's now the head coach at Fayetteville. And, you know, he was he was just dead set on team shoes. Well, we're playing a big game on the road. And uh, a guy that's, was, that worked with us, his name's Kyle Pink, and he's a head coach now, too. And he was like, don't let him go in there. I was like, why? And he goes, they've got every color shoe on you can imagine. And, and our, at the school, we were at our colors are red, white. They got neon. They have neon and purple. And we went out and hooped that night. And I said, don't you say a word about shoes the rest of the year. They can wear what they want to wear. They can wear cap shoes. I mean, the way we play, but, um, you know, that's something we change too. We, we offer a team shoe, but we'll offer four different styles, three yeah. different colors, you know, and, and, and this started a kid. I have a, he's I have a ton of respect for never hardly ever played. He comes to me one day and he goes, coach, I have to buy these team shoes. And he goes, you know, I was, well, yes, we all wear the same one. He goes, coach, he goes, I only play when we're up 30. We ain't going to be up 30. He goes, can I buy it? And he goes, is there a cheaper model I can buy that looked like those? And I was like, yeah. So yeah. we offer, you know, just like your, we think, talk like a car lot. We offer a navy shoe, a white shoe, a gray shoe. We have it in this model, this model, and this model. Whichever fits your budget and whatever fits your like. And so, it, but again, just getting back to, we were all, like, there's so many fights you can eliminate just that don't matter, that don't affect how we play. And, and evaluate what's the why behind the decisions. And most of the time, it's probably because your high school coach did it, your mm-hmm. college coach did it, maybe a movie that you watched like, or you saw some quote or a picture that you thought, that's it. Yeah. yeah, reevaluate those things. I had my best player a few years ago. I mean, sometimes listen to your best players. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. My best player come up that we were uh, trying to all wear Under Armour, and I had one shoe, and he's like, Coach, I'm, I'm sorry, like, those shoes really bother my feet. And at first I was kind of in my head, I'm thinking, come on, like, it's just a shoe. When I played, there was a brand and a style of shoe that I was most comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Why not, especially with their feet, allow them to be comfortable and happy? So we went away with team shoes. I have our four main colors of our school. Guys, I don't care what brand, have it be within those colors. And most kids can go out there, they can build their own right now, yeah. build their own, do all the Again, right in line with what you're saying. Just don't fight that battle. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.